Hey what's up guys, Matt here from TechRite Reviews, and I'm creating this tutorial mainly for the beginner who has never used GitHub but would like a way to easily sync their coding projects between one computer and another, or if they're looking to work on it with a team as GitHub is excellent for collaboration. But if you're an expert, you may want to look for another video as this is aimed at the beginners, although you may learn a few t tips and tricks you haven't seen before. So if you want to hang around, that's great. If not, I'll leave some links to some more advanced GitHub videos in the description below if you want to check those out. So in its most basic form, with GitHub you create a repository, and you can think of that as a project. It's kind of the home base where all of the project code gets synced through. And then what you do is on a laptop, desktop, whether it be Mac or Windows, you clone this repository and that creates a local copy on the actual hard drive of your computer. And then all the changes you make when you're editing your code are saved to your local hard drive. And then you have to push those changes back up to that repository. And then what you do is you can sync it up from any computer there afterwards and it will sync the changes you made on one computer down to the other allowing you to either create a backup like I said earlier or just have the same project in multiple places if you have a laptop when you're on the go and a desktop when you're at home. So for this tutorial I am going to be using Mac because I use it on a daily basis and I'm the most comfortable with it but if you're using Windows it's almost identical and I will go over a few of the basic GitHub commands in Terminal if you use Linux because sometimes if you want a little more control, you do have to use Terminal. But don't freak out, it's incredibly easy. And once you have them down, you can use them on any platform. It's only about 5 or 10 commands. And from there, you can easily control your GitHub projects and push and pull from repositories and have your code all synced up super easily. So once you've got your computer all started up, you want to go into your web browser and search for GitHub for and then put in Mac or Windows depending on what you're using. Once you do that, go to the website and click on the download link. And it is a slightly large file, but once it's downloaded, all you have to do is install it. It should only take a couple seconds to download. And after that, simply double tap on Mac and it will install. It'll prompt you to move it to the applications folder and you probably want to do this so you don't have to re-download it every time. After you click that, it will take a second, but then it will move itself to the folder and automatically restart. Next, hit continue, and if you don't have a GitHub account, you can sign up here. There's a little link down below the login, and once you have that, you can simply sign in. Hit continue and then it will ask you to verify your email and it will also ask for your name. So this is so it can know what computer is being used. So when you look at the changes that have been made you can see who they're coming from. And I do recommend installing the command line tools as if you ever want to do it from the command line unless you install the entire Xcode application you'll have to do this. So right now I'm just going to show you how to use any IDE and have it work with GitHub. So if you already have one started on your local hard drive and you want to add it to GitHub, you click on the plus icon in the upper left hand corner and then from the three tabs select add. Then you hit choose and you go into your hard drive and find out where the project is stored. When you hit open, you hit create and add repository and then it'll show all the files that are involved in this and it may be one or it may be ten or a hundred and then from here in the summary you can choose what you want to say so this is basically where you keep track of the changes you made and while you could just type anything and hit commit and sync you actually want to type something meaningful here as if you ever want to go back to an older version, it's helpful to keep track of what changes you made where. So I'm just going to call this the initial push. As that's what it's called when you push 
your code up to GitHub, and then I'm just going to hit commit and sync. So now you have to name your repository, and I normally just keep it the name of the project on my local hard drive, and it will automatically identify it as that. Under where it says account, I actually only have one account and that's this one on the top. However, you can create different organizations and I do this to keep my code kind of separated so it doesn't get too cluttered. So I have one for my computer science course, so at the end of the year, I don't have those projects that I've been working on all through the year cluttering up my main account where I work on the projects that I prefer. So I'm just going to select that one and then you can choose who has control over this, but I'm just going to keep it as me, I'm the owner, but if you want to learn more about working with team, like I said earlier, I am planning on doing another video, but you don't need to know what that is right now, you just can keep it as owner and hit push repository. So now you can see it's pushed to GitHub, and now I'm going to hop over to my other computer and show you how to clone this and how what it looks like really when you're syncing code between two different projects. So once you've pushed that to the cloud and you've got GitHub set up on your other computer, you once again go to the plus, but from here you're going to go to clone, and then you can see all of the repositories you have. This is all of the ones on your account or organizations you're a part of and then you can select it and hit clone. From here it asks you where you want to clone it to and once you've selected that location you simply hit clone and then your project is synced. Now if you're working in Eclipse like I normally do you can open up Eclipse and then from here you can import it. So this will make it seem like it's always been created in Eclipse and you never have to worry about copying over code and it will just import everything as is. So what you do is you go to File, Import, and then you're going to want to do an existing project into Workspace. So from here you browse and you find the location of where it's stored, click on the top folder of, or the folder with the name of the project and hit Open. Then you hit Finish. And as you can see, if I click on here and go into the SRC folder, all of my code from before, including this comment I've put in, is synced up. And then whenever I change something here and push it up to the cloud, like I just did on my laptop, I can resync it from my laptop and everything will be cloned there. So that may have been a little confusing, so I am going to show you how to do that right now. So don't freak out if you didn't understand that. So right now I am on my desktop computer and if I add a line of code I'm just going to make another comment. And then I save the project and then I go into GitHub and as you can see it recognized that this file right here has been modified. So what I'm going to do is type in the summary of what's changed it, of what has changed and I'll just say I added a comment and then I can hit commit and sync. And once that bar has completed in the upper right hand corner, if I hop over to my laptop and open up the GitHub application, I simply hit the sync button in the upper right hand corner and then I go back into my project and you can see that automatically the comment I just made on my desktop has already showed up here. And this works back and forth, it will sync as much code as you need. As I mentioned earlier in the video, you can also do everything through the command line. And while this may not be as quick always, you can do a lot more things with it. So I'm just going to show you the same basic things such as pushing and pulling repositories and seeing what the status is. So I'm not really showing you any more than you can do with the app, but I'm just showing you a different way to do it if you prefer. So the first command you need to learn is cd. And this isn't actually a GitHub command, but it just means change directory. Because before you can start using the GitHub commands, you have to navigate to where your project is. And the way you do that is cd, and then you can type in the name of the subfolder until you reach where your project is. And if you don't know what subfolder you need to go to, you can also just type list, and it shows you all the subfolders within the folder you're already in. And I misspoke earlier, you don't actually type list, you just type ls. 
So from here I know I need to go under my developer, so I type cd space and then the name of the folder. And if you know the path directly, you can just do forward slash and continue doing that until you get to the project. And when you're typing, everything is case sensitive, so be aware of that. I mistype, but if you type everything right, once you do that, you can see that I now am in the developer folder and these are the subfolders. So I'll once again change directory to the subfolder where my repository is located. And as you can see, it is listed there as Graphics Lab 5. So once I have done that, I need to actually go into that folder. So once again, I'll do CD and Graphics Lab underscore 5. So at this point, if you haven't already installed the command line tools, simply just type in git and hit install. So once it starts downloading, it'll only take a few minutes depending on your internet speed, but it's a lot faster than installing the entire Xcode application. But if you already have that installed, these will already be here and you don't need to install them. Okay, so once that is completed installing, it did take a little longer than I planned, but it will eventually install, so just wait for that to finish, and then you can resume this video. So now if you type something such as git status, it will show you that my branch is up to date with the origin master, and this origin master is the copy of my project that GitHub is storing on its servers. So now if I actually go into my project, And I'm just going to make a random comment here just to show off what would happen. And I'll say random comment. So now once I save this project and go back into the command line and I type git status again, you can see that it knows these have been modified and that it is not up to date with the copy GitHub is storing. So what I'm going to do is hit git add and then space and add a period and this period means it's going to add everything in the project and once i've done that i'm going to hit i'm going to type git commit and then you do hyphen m and this is where you put your summary so you do a quote and say added comments once you've done that it is committed and so once again if you type git status you don't need to here but if you just want to see you can see on my computer it's a head by one commit and that means it has one change here locally that has not yet been pushed to github servers so then i just do git push and it will prompt you for your login information this is a one-time thing after this you never have to enter it and it will do it automatically And when you're typing your password, it won't show up, but that's just something with command lines so no one can see how many characters your password have to make it so much more secure, but just type it out and hit enter. And this is what it looks like once you've pushed it, and now if I type git status once more, you can see it is up to date and this change that I've made in my project right here has been synced to GitHub servers and can be cloned to any other computer. So obviously here I was just adding a comment, but it could be anything, whatever you're adding, it works the exact same way. And if you know those few basic commands I'll sh I just showed you, you can push and update all your repositories from anywhere. And I'll leave a list of those four or five commands I just used in the description if you either didn't see them on screen or just want a reference you can create. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you did enjoy this video. It doesn't cover everything about GitHub, but should be enough to get you syncing your projects between multiple computers. And in the future, I'm thinking about doing a video of how to do more collaborative work with GitHub, as it is incredibly useful if you ever are working on a project with a team or just a couple friends and you're trying to make a cool app. So make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.